Welcome fellow gamers to another advanced character build for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, where we break down the character builds used by veteran players who leverage their experience and knowledge of the game to create some of the most unique combination of skills, spells, and tactics for successful survivability into the higher levels. We give you a level-by-level -level overview of the skills, spells, and abilities, how to use them effectively, and then we deep dive into the play style and combat tactics used to make this build successful. If you'd like to support the channel, you can acquire a full PDF version of today's build to 20th level by visiting our shop at the Dungeon Masters Guild website. Link is in the description. And as always, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get started. Today's build is the Paladin Sorcerer Multiclass. The Polearm Paladin and Sorcerer build, or Sorkadin as it is commonly known, is a unique mix of half-caster and crowd-controlled tank. Relying on Polearm Master and Sentinel feats in combination with your favorite flavor of Polearm and the Whip to create a 10-foot sphere of influence. The build is all about battlefield domination, area effect damage, crowd control with damage shield penalties for those lucky enough to gain melee range. Now you dominate this 10 foot radius where mobs will be attacked if they enter or exit through the combination of Polearm Master and Sentinel's attacks of opportunity. Using the reach function of either Polearm or Whip, creating lots of chances to use your reaction attacks. By utilizing the Sniper spell feat, we force mobs through Booming Blade to sit at 10 foot range while a slurry of spells and abilities reduces their health and movement to zero. Locking down mobs and forcing them to choose between ranged attacks, engage in for additional passive damage, or attack other party members with disadvantage. Using spells such as Command and Compel Duel to attract mobs to trigger reaction attacks while using the Sorcerer's metamagic abilities, specifically Quicken and Distance spells, to gain several move combinations in a single round or extend our touch-based casting capabilities to affect all those in our sphere of influence. Hold Person, Booming Blade, Dominate Beast, and Misty Step to reduce the number of mobs in play while acting as the main tank allows the Cleric to concentrate healing. We utilize Mirror Image, Blade Ward, and Stone Skin to reduce incoming damage. We add Auras and Damage Shields from Aura of Conquest, Armor of Agathy, and Scornful Rebuke for damage over time or as a penalty for engaging in melee. This build deals a great amount of damage by providing an abundance of unreserved spell slots for copious amounts of Divine Smite per long rest with synergy that Synergies that pull in mobs to our Aura of Conquest, frighten them using Wrathful Smite, Conquering Presence, and Fear to reduce their movement to zero, raise their Wiz Save requirements with Bestow Curse to keep them frightened and locked down, all the while they are taking damage from your Auras and Damage Overtime spells, with any hits coming with a high damage shield cost. With so many skills leaving mobs at a 10 foot distance, it keeps our damage mitigation high while keeping us in the fight versus multiple mobs and other party members safe while not sacrificing utility or the ability to combat, resurrect, or heal at a distance. So how do we build such a battlefield beast while maintaining our theme throughout the various levels? Let's dig deeper. So let's start by taking a look at the pros and cons. And we're going to assume that you're using a point by system with this character. And so you're going to end up with a low dexterity, putting him at the mercy of the die roll on initiative. And your constitution probably is going to be around 13 when building, which is lower than most tanks. But this build concentrates more on damage mitigation rather than da damage absorption. With a low wisdom score and being variant human, we are susceptible to control type spells. However, with a high base damage, exceptional crowd control, and continuous opportunity for reaction attacks per round, we're a formidable fighter versus multiple mobs. If you take the option of the Warcaster feat in later levels, you will be pushing back or even sacrificing some ability scores, so keep that in mind. So let's take a look at the resource management for this build. And one of the limitations of the Paladin class in general is the shallow spell slot pool from which to cast spells or power additional damage for Divine Smite. However, by multiclassing with a few sorcerer levels, we greatly improve our pool of spell slots, but we introduce another draw on them with the conversion of spell slots to sorcery points to, pa to power the metamagic ability. 
early levels before the introduction of sorcerer or metamagic, you will be relying more heavily on your few spell slots for use with the spell compelled duel. As we level, you'll be managing spell slots for casting, as well as divine smite uses, and finally for converting into sorcery points to enhance spells to utilize this build's various combat combinations each round. Our build guide found at Dungeon Master Guild's website has a level-by-level -level guide for general rules on how best to determine managing these three dynamics as you level. Diving deep into this build, um, we find that it depends on four main tactics. Starting at level 1 with the variant human uh, racial selection and the polearm master feat, you get the potential for one action, bonus action, and reaction every turn right out of the gate. Any mob engaging and entering in your 10-foot sphere of influence opens them up to an attack of opportunity. By level 9, we're introducing the sentinel feat, giving us a reaction attack if the mobs try to leave our sphere of influence. This, builds, this build excels at maximizing the use of reaction nearly every turn. By combining spells like Compelled Duel or Command with the Approach or Flee option, we set up opportunities to force the triggering of these abilities. With the Warcaster feat added later, you can turn that opportunity attack into casting Booming Blade to lock that mob down as a reaction. Now you may have been wondering why the whip. Now there will be times where you're not able to use your polearm. Think uh, Narrow Corridor. At these times, we want a backup weapon that can still be used with Booming Blade or, to a limited extent, Sentinel. Now, the Sniper spell feat we take at level 4, choosing the Sorcerer's Booming Blade spell. Now, this spell is normally self-based with a 5-foot radius. However, Sniper spell extends us to a 10-foot radius and opens up our ability to use the reach function of both the polearm and the whip, effectively making us able to attack mobs at 10-foot distance with either. Using Booming Blade at 10-foot distance means that the mob is forced to make a decision. They can attack us using ranged, they can move the 5 feet to engage with us and take the additional passive damage, or they can cast a spell. Then comes the lockdown and damage phase. With our passive Aura of Conquest ability, any mob we frighten in our sphere of influence, either with Conquering Presence, Fear, or Wrathful Smite, will have their movement reduced to zero and psychic damage added every round they are there. As an added synergy, mobs who try to leave or flee our sphere of influence will trigger Sentinel's opportunity attack that can also reduce their movement to zero. During this time, through the use of the Sorcerer's metamagic ability to quicken spells like Sword Burst and Orth Tremor, we generate area effect damage and negative effects to all those mobs in our sphere of influence while still being able to attack in the same round. And finally, with Armor of Agathy and Scornful Rebuke, we generate damage shields that penalize those mobs who are lucky enough to engage in melee and actually land an attack on us. Combat Combinations Through the leveraging of Sorcery Metamagic, we're able to utilize some key combat combinations that enhance our crowd control nature and dish out some devastating burst damage when the moment calls for it. So be sure to watch for these opportunities during combat. With the Quicken spell Meta Magic, we have the Quicken Booming Blade, turning this attack into a bonus action, followed up by a standard attack action, gaining you 2 to 3 attacks per turn with a reaction attack still in reserve. We can Quicken the Whole Person spell as a bonus action and get an attack with or without Booming Blade to get an automatic critical hit, assuming we don't roll a natural 1, as most Dungeon Masters will still ask you to make the attack roll. We can quicken Sword Burst or Earth Tremor as a bonus action, generating area effect damage and possibly knocking the mobs in your sphere of influence prone, followed by your attack action at advantage. Taking a look at the distance spell Metamagic, we can cast Cure Wounds at a distance of 30 feet, making it viable during combat, or distance Sword Burst to increase the radius to 10 feet to encompass our entire sphere of influence. Turning our attention to our skills, we can pair Guided Strike for an attack roll gain of plus 10 while sinking a spell slot to add Divine Might damage of up to 5d8 of additional damage if we successfully hit. A great combination for boss-like mobs are those who are just harder to hit. 
It's important that you understand which spells can be quickened or distanced, always remembering that you can only cast a cantrip and leveled spell in a single turn prior to a reaction, and be mindful of how many uses your skills have before a short or long rest to create these unique combinations. In all, the use of meta magic really gives this build a lot of situational combat tactics to keep our damage versus multiple mobs or generate high single target burst damage when needed most. In the higher levels, you'll be reducing the saves of your targets with Bestow Curse. Have several passive auras active, dealing damage, improving saves, and giving you immunity to fear like spells and effects. While teleporting around the battlefield, locking down mobs or pulling them into your 10-foot sphere of influence where you can burn them down with high weapon damage fueled by Divine Smite. Area effect spells to knock them prone, giving your other party members advantage and still being able to heal or resurrect in combat from up to 30 feet away. With multiple combat combinations every round, a reaction attack that feels like an extra attack every round, and lots and lots of passive damage. We hope you've enjoyed this overview of an advanced character build for Dungeons & Dragons. You can support the channel by grabbing the PDF version of this build with more in-depth detail and a full level-by-level -level guide to 20th level. Its uh, link is in the description. A great companion to use as you level your own Paladin Sorcerer. If you have an idea for a basic build and want us to supercharge it, let us know. And as always, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any advanced character builds for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition in the future. And we will see you next time.